Okay, so we're gonna move further into working with sequences with this video, working with sequences. Um, our objective is to provide familiarity with describing sequences. We're gonna be examining sequences in a variety of different lenses. Um, the reason being that we're going to encounter them in a variety of different ways. Um, and being able to work with them in, in these different ways is, is actually very, very important. Um, so the first thing that we're going to start with is we're actually going to talk about finding a formula for a sequence. And the reason for that is not because, you know, there's a, there's a definitive way to do that, um, but because sometimes this is where we get stuck at first, right? Um, which is we're encountering some sequence that just, that is described term wise, right? So we might have a sequence such as, and we've already encountered the sequence uh, for the record, right? So um, if it feels familiar, don't, don't worry about it. So we have one, two thirds, four ninths, eight twenty sevenths, dot, 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 right? So this is a sequence, um, regardless of whether it converges or doesn't converge, um, we may be wondering what is the expression for the nth term because a lot of what we're going to be using in our tools to determine convergence requires us to have an explicit formula okay so some tips and tricks here that we're going to examine are um, look for what's changing look for, for what's staying the same right so if you're encountering the sequence, right? If you're if you're having trouble finding patterns, the first thing you want to look at is what's the form of the number, right? In this case, the only one that's really different in this sense is one because it's not expressed as a fraction, but all the other ones are, right? Two thirds, four ninths, eight twenty seventh. So we know that there should be some division happening here, right? Some fraction, um, and if that is tripping you up, the fact that one is different, then just write it as one over one. Um, okay, the next thing that you want to do, so we know that there's going to be some, so a sub n is going to be something over something. Um, look at the just the numerator by itself and see if there's a pattern that stands out in you, right? And something that's important to, to remember is that you may have um, it, it may take you a while, right, um, to develop the intuition that you need here. Um, but don't worry, right? Um, there are some recurring patterns here that you're going to be able to piggyback off of eventually. Um, so in this case, I'm going to go ahead and call it, I, I see a pattern of powers of two. So two to the, not n, but n minus one. Why n minus one? Well, you also have to be careful about what your starting term is going to be. Remember that sequences start with n equals 1. So if I plug in 1, I want the first term to have a numerator of 1. And I can only get that with 2 to the 0. Now look at the denominator. And you're going to see a 3, power of 3, in the exact same form. So 2 n minus 1 over n minus 1. You, we get, um, we can express this more nicely like this, right? So this is the nth term of the sequence. It's the n minus one power of two thirds. Okay, why is this important? Well, because we're going to be working with sequences and series that require um, terms in the sequence that look like this. And there's going to be really cool, interesting applications that happen. Um, once we, you know, are able to talk about actual convergence of a sequence because we have the tools in place to, to work with them, right? Um, all right, so here's another example. Uh, what about negative uh, one half, one fourth, negative one sixth, one eighth, negative one tenth, and so on. Okay, so remember, pick out what's, what's common first and then look at the differences. 
So there's going to be a really neat pattern here that we call alternating. Uh, where the terms of the sequence are alternating between positive and negative. So um, here, remember, we, we have a fraction again, right? So the, notably, there is a numerator that's alternating between negative 1 and 1. So let's just call that 1 because we're going to take care of the negative part in a second. Um, and the denominator is going to be an even number, right? So the first one is... 2 times 1, the next one is 2 times 2, the next one is 2 times 3, right? So one simple way of expressing even numbers, of course, is 2 times n. Now, to take care of the negative sign, right, we're going to need to involve a term that involves negative 1 raised to some power, because you know that the powers of negative 1 alternate between 1, negative 1, 1, negative 1. And whether... Whether the first one starts with positive 1 or negative 1, um, we can set that by setting the correct um, power, either n, n minus 1, n plus 1. Remember that we start with n equals 1, right? So because the first term is negative, we want that first power to be odd. So we can start with n. So this is the, this is the term, um, sorry, this is the expression for the nth term. You'll notice that this is the alternating part, okay? And this is the actual, um, the magnitude of that, of that term. Okay. So one more, just to guide your exam, uh, guide your intuition, right? Let's think about the pattern. Um... one over one, one over uh, one times two, one over one times two times three, one over one times two times three times four. We're doing this in a very easy way to see the pattern, right? Um, but there is a uh, operation that we need to introduce here. And importantly, if you haven't seen this before, you it may be shown to you as not expanded out in terms of like breaking out the multiplication, but it may look like this. Um, so that, that is harder to see. And so this is why I broke it up in terms of the, um, the multiplication. And so there's in, I'm going to do a, a side note here. There's something called the factorial operation. You may have seen this before, you may not. And really what it is, is if you take some natural number, some integer, and you apply this factorial operation, which looks like an exclamation mark, that means take n, multiply it by the next integer down, multiply it by the next integer down, all the way down to 3 times 2 times 1, okay? So this means that something like 6 factorial would be 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, right? All right, so then that means our pattern here is going to be c sub n. Okay? The nth term of this sequence here that we have is 1 over n factorial. Okay, do you do you see that? The first one is one factorial, then two factorial, then three factorial. It, it that's the denominator. Okay, even if I've written it backwards, that's still the pattern. Yeah. Okay, so again, there are some tips and techniques here that are gonna. They're not hard and fast rules, right? I'm just suggesting that this is where you begin, and a lot of these patterns are gonna reoccur, and so you'll have the opportunity to build intuition for yourself. So let's now talk about describing sequences. So the first way is term-wise, of course. 
Um, and so we can write the first five terms of a sequence like this is in a, in a um, analytical sense easier than what we just did, right? But it is still important that we talk about something like this because um, we're going to be um, we're going to be developing some intuition here as well, right? Um, so in particular, in order to begin to to see how sequences are going to converge, then we need to see the actual values of the terms, right? So in this case, a sub 1, right? So negative 1 to the n minus 1 is going to be negative 1 to the 0 over 5 to the 0. So that's 1 over 1, which is 1. Okay. a sub 2, negative 1 to the 1, 5 to the 1. That's going to be negative 1 fifth. a sub 3, negative 1 squared, 5 squared. That's 1 25th. a sub 4, negative 1 cubed, 5 cubed. That's going to be uh, negative 1 over 125. Last one, negative 1 to the 4th over 5 to the 4th, 1 over 625. Okay, so these are the first five terms of the sequence. You'll notice they alternate, hence, you know, that's where this came from. And the denominators are just getting larger, which, yeah, because powers of 5. Okay, in time, we'll be able to... Uh, really show what the limit of the sequence is, but just for now, see if you can start to develop some intuition about what this must be. Um, so if this sequence converges, right, my claim is that the limit of this sequence is zero, okay? And I claim that because we're only getting larger and larger fraction uh, powers of five in the denominator. The numerator isn't changing. And so eventually we're gonna get something really, really, really tiny. And then they never stop getting smaller from that, from that point forward, right? Even if they are still alternating, okay? Um, all right, but more on that later. So let's see another kind of description, okay? Which is the recursive um, form of the sequence. Um, almost all sequences can be described recursively. Um, sometimes they can only be described recursively. Um, so consider b sub 1 equals 2 and b sub n plus 1 equals b sub n over 1 plus b sub n. Okay, so find an explicit formula for b sub n. Okay, that's our task. How do we do this? Um, it helps to start with b sub 1 and start finding the next few terms of the sequence using the recursive formula. So uh, b sub 1 equals 2. b sub 2 is b sub 1 over 1 plus b sub 1, which is 2 over 1 plus 2, or 2 thirds. Great. B sub 3, then, we can find now, because we have B sub 2, is B sub 2 over 1 plus B sub 2. So that's going to be 2 thirds over 1 plus 2 thirds. Okay. Now we have 2 thirds over, think about this as 3 over 3. We're going to have um, 5 thirds here. So the thirds will cancel, and we'll just get 2 fifths. Okay, very nice. B sub 4. So if you don't have yet a grasp of what the pattern is, right, it will help if you keep going, right? Do as many as you need. Usually the first five is enough, but do as many as you need. So B sub 4 is B sub 3 over 1 plus B sub 3, which is 2 fifths all over 1 plus 2 fifths. Okay, so 
something is starting to emerge, at least for me. I don't know if you're seeing it yet. Um, but notice that every time, right, what we're going to get is we're going to end up with some complex fraction where the denominators are going to be the same because we have to get the same denominator, right? It's by design. Um, so we have 7 fifths and 2 sevenths. Okay. So I'm going to call it, I see a pattern. So 2, 2 thirds, 2 fifths, and 2 sevenths, okay? The numerator isn't changing. The numerator is 2. The denominator, on the other hand, and it helps if you think about this as 2 over 1, the denominator is all the odd numbers in sequence, okay? How do you express odd numbers in sequence? Well, here's how. So I claim that the explicit form here is 2 over... 2n minus 1. Okay. So it sometimes it depends on whether you want 2n plus 1 or 2n minus 1. It's always going to be one of those two, though. Okay. In this case, I picked 2n minus 1 because if you plug in 1, I'll get 1. So it depends on whether you want to start with 1 or 3. Right. Um, if, I, if it was starting with 3, then it would be 2n plus 1. But it's 2n minus 1. All right, so that, that is the explicit form of, of uh, B sub n, and that's how you can find it. So not all recursive formulas are going to give, are going to lend themselves to, um, are going to lend themselves to an explicit formula. Um, but for most of the ones that we encounter, there will be one, okay? Um, so the last thing here that I want to leave you with is what is what what do we what do we know about this sequence what what must happen to it and my claim is that the limit as n goes to infinity of b sub n is zero again bizarre why does that happen um and my claim here is that this happens because um the numerator isn't changing, so it's always going to be 2, but the denominator keeps getting larger and larger. So 3, 5, 7. Eventually, it's going to get so large that the terms become negligible, right? All right. So in the next video, we're actually going to discuss some um, limit laws and some ideas that will help us determine whether a limit converges, okay? And then that's where it all starts to come together because that's when we'll start doing the calculus that's associated with sequences.